it brings it down to a level to where it's actually absurd. Yes. Um, I, I notice uh, in one part of your book, you have spoken of our reality and questioned as to how solid, solid it is. And I think you equate that with the ability of some people to hypnotize another person and actually get them to believe that they cannot see something that is perfectly solid and in front of them. It's an interesting point, I think. Yeah, it actually shows the, the power that our mind does have over this pattern, this energy, this manifestation of what we call reality. And we've been noticing this ever since the double slit experiment. We know now that our consciousness does interact even at the atomic level of matter. Right. So, what does that mean in terms of our physical bodies? I mean, are we individual units with our own power of belief, or are we influenced by everyone else? Well, I, I think that question, along with a lot of questions that we need to start asking, has a yes and a no, because the more I look into different aspects of life and science and religion, I have noticed that there is no yes or no, but yet there's both, and it's, <laughs> it, it's a very tricky area because we haven't developed the um, the language to really negotiate with these thoughts. Mm. Right. So. How do we know what we know, I think, was the question that was asked in your book, talking about our consciousness, consciousness field. I think you quoted someone else. Uh, am I correct? That was Lynn McTaggart. So how do we know what we know? <laughs> yeah, how do we know? And how do we know we know it? I, I guess yes. it, it boils down to experience. For instance, and this is valuable to really understand when it comes to how we accept beliefs as our truth and we identify with them. It would be like if I, if I set up this uh, restaurant and people come to my restaurant and they're hungry, they're expecting food and they sit down, but all they get is the menu with pictures of food. <laughs> they're not really going to get any nourishment, but if I can convince them and really make them believe that they just ate a meal by simply looking and not having their own experience, they'll walk out and be satisfied for a while, but eventually kept catches up to you. Eventually we need to ingest through experience those inner truths that we're really seeking. Hmm. Uh, again, a very interesting point there. But of course, I suppose it is only human to want to have beliefs. There seems to be this urge inside most people to seek out the truth, and this is really what we're looking for, isn't it? Yes, and in a sense, again, this is where we have to really define what we're talking about, because I need to believe, when I go to sleep at night, I need to believe that tomorrow I'll be able to get up and start off my day. I mean, we have certain beliefs that allow us to take the next step, but some of the beliefs that we're talking about are really belief and ideology systems systems that we've bought into and have become dogmas that we live our lives by century after century, irregardless of what we have found in science and experience. Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, let's move on to something else that's very topical at this time because of the expectation that this cycle is about to end. Uh, the Mayan prophecies uh, with regards to 2012 what is your view about that? Well, I think based upon the fact that so many cultures have talked about the same thing for so many years, I mean, the Hopi, the Cherokee, uh, the Aztec, the Mayans, they've all talked about this time in question. Even the builders of the pyramid, when they built the Great Pyramid of Giza, there's a, a little channel that points up to the sky with a star map to the right with Sirius, and it's only at this time in our history that the star map lines up to how the, the pyramid is built. So whoever built that pyramid, whether it was 4,000 or 20,000 years ago, they went to a great deal of effort 
to tell future generations, knowing that we're going to go through all kinds of turmoil and weather changes and catastrophic events. Knowing this, they went to a great deal of effort to point out that we need to pay attention to right now. And then when you look at the Mayan prophecy, you have to remember, too, that whoever it was that gave them their calendar told them that at the end of the calendar, they would return. Right. Now, uh, I have read from channeled messages that, in fact, the information they used, which seemed to be quite unusual for people as we view them in that period of history, was given to them by ETs. And I believe you do agree that we are even now being visited by ETs. Yeah, I mean, I, I would feel foolish to not at least look at the information and come to that uh, conclusion. But again, if you if you just look at the prophecies of indigenous peoples, which have always been more in touch with uh, a lot of the earth intelligence, they all say the same thing, that we're, we're getting ready to be visited. And uh, I think we should pay attention to this, because even recently, as recently as this month, the United Nations is starting to print up a protocol what to do on a global level, and they're working with NASA, what to do on a global level if and when we're visited by extraterrestrials. So we have to ask ourselves, if the United Nations is doing something like this, it must mean something. Oh, yes, it is. I think absolutely, and indeed I can add to that uh, some information that's come out just this week which uh, claims that Obama uh, is ready to announce the presence of ETs and apparently there is a date set, a final date set for this announcement for the 1st of January next year and uh, it is said that if the announcement isn't made at that date then the ETs will present themselves in such a way that the governments will have no alternative but to admit to their presence because it will be so obvious and um, cannot be really disputed. So I think, yes, something is building up. Uh, in fact, this week I also read that they've actually appointed uh, a lady to be the representative of the UN but later uh, that was denied I don't know if you're aware of that no I wasn't but I think what you're talking about is another aspect of the same thing that is to work out the protocol for receiving ETs who want to be announced I suppose but because you know what it, it seems to all be converging at the same time so this could be a very traumatic event for a lot of people that aren't in touch with some of the information that we're talking about. I mean, and this information goes way back. Alice Bailey, she once said, this will be a time of telepathic interplay, which will eventually annihilate time as we know it. Pierre de Chardin, translation or dematerialization into another sphere of the universe. And more recently, Terence McKenna said, our minds will unite like the fragments of a hologram. So right, a lot right. of people on the edge of this conscious pioneering evolution that we're on are picking up this for many, many, many years. Indeed. Indeed. Yes, and I, I, I liked your, also your quote from Ken Carey, whose work I very much admire, who said we will experience full consciousness of who we are. Yes, and I, I think that that consciousness is going to be the, the culmination of coming together with a completely different kind of global mind, a planetary mind, in, in which we can't even imagine right now. I mean, imagine if you were the cell in a heart, and I was a cell in the same heart, how difficult it would be to imagine what it would be like to be fully conscious in the being that we inhabit. 